we just saw a clip of Survive the Raft, uh, the host of Discovery's Survive the Raft, Sundays at 9 Eastern and Pacific. Uh, Nate Boyer here on the program. So what is this show all, all about? What do you so, got for me? It was, it's based on a social experiment from 50 years ago. This okay. uh, anthropologist named Santiago Genovese. He put 10 people on a raft yes. from all walks of life, right? Race, religion, politics, you name it. Couldn't be more different. They were, they were literally handpicked to disagree. Okay. And they floated from the Canary Islands in Spain to Mexico. That's a long trip. That's a, it's 101 day. It was 101 days across the Atlantic. Yes. And this is, you know, it's 1973, very divisive times. You've got, oh, yeah. you know, coming out of the Vietnam War, Watergate, Roe versus Wade. Oh, my gosh. And then now it's 2023 and, you know, still, I, I'd say, relatively divisive times. Yes. You know, and a lot of some of these similar subjects are coming back up, topics coming back up. And um, essentially what, you know, what he wanted to see was like, can these people put aside their differences and work together to survive this trip? Yes. And they ultimately did, but not without a lot of struggle and uh and sex um <laughs> they actually <laughs> on the raft <laughs> oh my gosh Not on our show but no, no i'm saying back ridge. in the day no, yeah, i mean it's the yeah. 70s so the, the tabloids got a hold of it like, and they called it the sex raft oh and, and really so, yeah it create it was I like this thing know that and people didn't really know what the what the whole journey was actually about so so is that where the phrase get a room was uh <laughs> it was born uh <laughs> she can't i mean we're all on the same yeah. raft i mean get a room okay i'm sorry yeah so go ahead okay. so i mean it's a pretty big raft but they're still not really rooms it's 60 by 40 foot um oh, yeah well, it's on, metal on your current Yes. Program. Well, we, okay. we we actually rebuilt the original to spec. Oh, really? Yeah. So that that okay. one was called the Akali. We built the Akali too, mm -hmm. and we didn't float across the Atlantic. Yeah, you were sure it wasn't called the E. coli, and now you're just changing it to a different. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'm we just sorry. misheard. We misheard what it was actually called. Oh, we need to <laughs> change the pronunciation from the 70s. I'm sorry. I exactly. don't mean to interrupt. So now yeah. I love a good dad joke. It, I mean, come on. <laughs> I'm full Your of them. Your kids are in camp. Yeah, I tell you, are in camp, are I know. And so I got to get all the E. coli <laughs> jokes out before they come home. Uh, all right. So so now you've recreated the... The, uh, the whole experience. The, the whole experiment, okay. really. I okay. mean, we, we rebuilt the raft. Um, we were down in, in Panama, in the Pearl Islands. Okay. So we're not floating across the Atlantic, uh, but we are set adrift in the Pacific Ocean. Okay. And there's a set of challenges that, you know, come up throughout the series where, you know, these... These people have to work together uh, to, and they're trying to earn money. You okay. know, I mean, there is, there is, there's money at stake and okay. all that, but at the same time, uh, it's really about, at least for me, and I think a lot of people, it's really about like, can people, can, can people get over their, their, their stuff, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And just move forward as a group, listen to one another, not always have to be the one with all the answers. And so is there um, a performing of tasks that are there? Yeah. Uh, and then, uh, and then I imagine a voting off process of exactly. Yeah. And all that. The, and, and, and we gave them as much autonomy as we could. So they kind of make their own rules. It's almost oh, okay. a little Lord of the flies element to it where, <laughs> you know, they, well, I hope we, if that stops at a water's edge <laughs> to use the phrase as well. Okay. Yeah. Understood. We'll, we'll okay. We'll see. we'll see. Tune in Sundays at nine Eastern and Pacific. Oh, that is called discovery for a reason. Yeah, exactly. Okay. All right. But yeah, I mean, that's, and, and yes, there is, there's new crew members introduced as we go and oh, great. they've, they've got to decide like how I need to build the strongest team possible. Um, but I also want to keep in mind that, um, you know, as we go along, I could, I could be on the chopping block at any moment. Mm -hmm. So I've got to carry myself in a certain way. I've got to pull my weight. It's hard to do. It's hard to, in life, I think, to figure out like, where do I fit in the best? Do yeah. I need to be a leader right now? Do I need to be a follower right now? Am I being too much the gray man? Am I too big of a personality? Do people like me? Do they not? All these things are going through these people's heads. And then sure. the discussions, the conversations that come up, the, the other stuff that comes up is it's, it's it's pretty interesting. It's okay, really interesting. and you're the host of this thing. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome, brother. It, it was awesome. That it is awesome. Is I'm excited. Great. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Nate Boyer here on the Rich Eisen show. So were you like uh, on a on a boat filing <laughs> the boat, and then you would you know like because I, I again I've done the reality competition hosting thing before, and uh, I know you have to sort of be stationed nearby to pop in every now and then, right? So exactly. It, so exactly. is that what you were doing? Yeah. So I was, I stayed, uh, I was on, you know, one of the islands for a good amount of it, but we'd come out on sometimes on panga boats, sometimes on this old military air, uh, aircraft, mm -hmm. uh, sea craft, yes. <laughs> a military ship. And I would come join them and, you know, and kind of meet up with them. And it was, it, it became funny because every time 
I'm heading in and they see me from off the raft because it's not like I just pop in. They're yeah, like, no. oh, God, like what's, you know, what's... now what? <laughs> <laughs> Here comes Nate. They're like, guys, Nate's coming. Oh, and everyone's like, oh, P's and Q's, you know, yeah, sure. let's, let's stop arguing. And, uh, yeah. you know, like I'm like, I have any say in who stays and who goes. It's right. all up to them. But, okay. You know, pretty funny. Do you have any say in your wardrobe? Uh, <laughs> what do you got? Next question. <laughs> what do you mean? Oh. What do you mean? Well, well I mean, I, here's what I mean is that oh. I, 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 I had to. I did they have want, a little bit. Well, they they wanted to dress me in like like a bomber jacket at one point. What's wrong with that? Well, because I, I don't. <laughs> I, I don't. I'm not. I'm, look, there, there I am in Alcatraz. Okay, there I am in Alcatraz. I might still have that zip. Okay. Um, you look like you belong in that photo. Do you, I, I, <laughs> but here I am. I'm trying to look really mysterious. You do look mysterious. I, but I, I, I don't. I'm, that's the that's like the last word you can use to describe me. Is mysterious. I'm that just, was a dozen years ago. Yeah. Do you think I could be more mysterious now? You get a little more gray in the beard. Yeah. The scruff. Yeah. I think you're yeah. more mysterious. Now. Furl the brow a bit more. Because again, yeah. I, I saw your, I saw your, uh, you know, your clip where you're coming out and you're, you know, and these contestants are all wide eyed and trying to figure out what's going on and they're, they're excited. There you are. There you, so you, but do you cho- so now did you That's choose the, serious. did you, well, no, but did you choose the slicker? I mean, like, does this your choice right okay, there? Okay. So what? the shirt underneath, first of all, I'll give a little plug here. Go for it. Trinidad jeans, I'm veteran aboard. owned uh, company. Very good. Yeah. Awesome. Love it. And then it was raining before we went out there and then of course right when cameras roll it, it stops the sun so, comes out so, so did some sweating bullets did some intern have to run out and get you one of these slickers like last yeah, no, i mean well actually kind of how did you know this that's why i do this <laughs> stuff. i don't know you're oh, actually living. right i used to do this someone's gotta get nate's nate's gonna get wet it wasn't okay? an intern it was to, like it was like one of the producers <laughs> really? like, ran because we we're in we we're in uh panama city there and yeah. they just ran to whatever sporting goods store and we're just like What's a jacket without a huge logo on it, you know, and they found it and just ramped it. Seriously. Jeez. And we put it on because it was pouring, and they're like, we have to, we can't wait. It's, it might not stop raining. We're just going to shoot. Yeah. So then as soon as I walk out there, it stops raining, and the sun comes so what is out. It? Is so it, it was just is like there like sweating, a, and they're like, you can't take it off now. We already started rolling. So so like the local Ricardo's Sporting Goods? <laughs> yeah. Is that what it is? <laughs> REI Panama? I'm, I'm just trying to, how do you say R-E-I. that, you know, whatever the, the Spanish nickname for dick is? You know, for sporting oh, goods, you oh, see, that's where I was yeah. going. Nice. Rico's, maybe. See, I'm just out of options right now. <laughs> but that's that's basically you need what I do. I just need to come home. Dad, stop. Dad, stop. <laughs> oh, my gosh. But that was what I, I, I that the Alcatraz episode, we would shoot stuff at like four or five in the morning, too. Oh, wow. Did you do that sort of stuff? Like four uh, or five in the morning? And I, stuff, or? Uh, not really. Okay, good, uh, good. Uh, They shot stuff, but I didn't have to be there that a couple oh, times you're, you're the host. Night, you're the star. You're the star. Is that in your rider, Nate? Wait, but why four or five in the morning? Because uh, this is when the game would be played. Oh. And and the oh. game, it, you had to escape from Alcatraz, and who? Oh, uh, so yeah, yeah. you night never knew. Sense. Like sense. if it if the game was culminating at like four or five in the morning, you had to be ready. Right. I yeah, I pulled an all. I, that was my first all nighter since college. Wow. Was that night was in it, Alcatraz? Was it? Sober? It was it definitely sober? <laughs> <laughs> the college one most certainly was not. That was the, that was a uh, the the annual tradition in uh, in Ann Arbor on uh, St. Patrick's Day. Sleep out overnight. Oh man! But at any rate, so fun. you must have had a blast, though, right? Yeah, I, I did. Mean, I had a really good time. That is so cool. I didn't know what to expect, and I learned a lot. I learned a lot from the experiment itself from right. these people. Honestly, yeah, yeah. I think I, going into it, I was like, oh, I would crush this. I'd be fine. I'd. And then to have to see like stuff that was introduced to them and yeah. the way that they had to cope with it. And they got cameras in their face and they're trying to be honest about their feelings and opinions about things. Yeah, and yeah. In this day and age, that's sometimes that's tough, you know, no matter which way you, because somebody's going to attack you, you know, if you right. have a, and it was just, it was cool to see, but it's also cool to see a lot of these people honestly kind of put aside their preconceived notions about one another. And maybe it took some time, but after a while they're like, all right, I actually understand where this person's coming from. And, you know, maybe, maybe I'm not, maybe I don't, maybe I don't got it all figured out. I got uh, Nate Boer here uh, in studios again, Survive the Raft, um, airing Sunday, 9 Eastern and Pacific on the Discovery Channel and Max. What was your training camp experience like, Nate, back in the day? <laughs> it was good. It was, I Seattle, mean, right? I was, it was a Seattle? long snapper, so it was a little, it was, it's easier for the specialists. I'm sure it is. Lie. I mean, I did go out. I would be uh, one of the scout team, you know, receivers or DBs when they're doing the walkthrough stuff or the jog through stuff. If it's full speed, I'm, I'm not. Why would I be out there? You right. Know, I'm not keeping up with anybody. Right. Exactly. Um, but no, it was great. I mean, yeah, it was Seattle. 
the best time to be in Seattle is from May to September, and that's when I was there. <laughs> so it was gorgeous. Right. The training camp, the facilities there, and then obviously like the team. I mean, that was right after they came off back to back Super Bowls. So like the personalities from from Marshawn and Richard Sherman to you know Doug Baldwin and Jimmy Graham had just signed with the team. Yeah, yeah. And uh, obviously you know Russell Wilson, Bobby Wagner, endless. You know Michael Bennett. It was a, it was cool. It was a really cool experience. Well, I, I was imagine, very lucky. And again, I'm sure they must have known your story coming in. Like you weren't just any ordinary regular long snapper coming in. Did any of them come up to you and start talking to you about you know, your the, experience the, in the, your the, life? Of, you know, with what you did in Texas and obviously serving our country at the same time. Yeah, no, they 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 did. They did. Uh, the coolest moment though was actually I only played in one preseason game, and then mm -hmm. I got cut like three days later. But the coolest moment for me was before the game. So first of all, I was warming. I remember warming up at at uh, you know a midfield snapping, and I'm nervous in Seattle. Know. In Seattle, yeah, okay. I was in Seattle. We were playing the Broncos, um, and it was Peyton Manning's last season. So they went on to win the Super Bowl that year. Mm -hmm. And Peyton's standing right next to me, warming up, and I didn't know it because I was just in my own head and in my zone, trying to you know just prepare. And I like stop and kind of look up and take the stadium in, and it was raining there too, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, but the sun was out, uh, and I look over and I see. Peyton standing there throwing the ball, and I just like took a breath, and I was like, "Oh my gosh, this is crazy! Mm -hmm. like, it's really cool." And then we 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 uh, we get in the locker room. The equipment manager asked me if I want to lead the team out of the tunnel with the flag before the game, which, yeah. which I got to do in college. And I was like, "Yes, of course." It's almost like he knew I was getting cut in three days. You know, he was <laughs> like, "Yeah, this is <laughs> it's gonna be your one chance, bud. Enjoy it." So I did that, and I went out, and then and, you know, then they they played the anthem, and um, you know, for me being in the military and all that, and and. I carried my best friend's casket draped in a, an American flag. So those symbols, you know, they just mean something very special to me. And Sure, they're more and, than symbols. You yeah, know? I mean, for obviously, sure. Yeah, yeah definitely, definitely. Right. And uh, so the song starts playing. I started crying. And uh, I didn't know if anybody was pick, caught that. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, a camera caught it, and I'm, not a, I'm an ugly crier, so that was pretty bad. Mm -hmm. uh, but <laughs> after it was over... You know, I like turn around and all those guys I mentioned and a bunch of others from the team just came up and like hugged me and were like, they, they all like recognized it, noticed the, the moment. It was really, it was really special. How many tours did you do? I did three, three. I went to Iraq once and Afghanistan twice. And each time you would come back and go play football at Texas? Is that what you were doing? Yeah, the last, my last two deployments were, were while I was in college at Texas. So I would take my finals early and leave in, you know, uh, like late April mm -hmm. and then come back the first week of August, right before training camp. Uh, Admiral McRaven, uh, who was the SOCOM commander who planned the Bin Laden mission, you know, he was, a, he was a Navy SEAL mm -hmm. uh, and and then eventually became the chancellor at UT. But when he was still the SOCOM commander, he, he had played or he had ran track at Texas back in the day. And he knew I was in the in the National Guard at the time, but still in the Special Forces. And he made sure because he thought it was important that I still got to, you know, live out my American dream of playing football, that I, I would make sure I would get back in time for training camp, which so was, was it, really cool. Was it uh, ever a time where you are in uh, on a serious mission, for the lack of a better phrase, in theater, and then <laughs> the following weekend you're... Yeah. You're long snapping like that that happened literally my last deployment which was in 2014 where that that's you know it's late in the in the war um and i was in afghanistan and not long after i think october was when we went purely to a train advise assist mission at least with the special forces but this was in uh late july and you know we had to we, we had a, a mission with the with the uh afghan special forces mm -hmm. um and we went out with them into this place where we knew there was a lot of, um, uh, you know, the enemy were kind of bedded down because no one had gone in this valley for quite some time. And so we, we, we had a good idea that we were probably going to get into it a little bit that day. Mm -hmm. And we roll in as soon as we roll in, like mortars were like full on attacked. And I was on the, the tailgate of one of the uh, uh, Humvees on the, on the uh, you know, on one of the machine guns and just laying down suppressive fire. So the other like mostly the afghan special forces who were leading this um uh, raid essentially could go <clears throat> excuse me mm -hmm. could go into these buildings and uh you know try to find these people mm -hmm. and i just remember like there was sniper fire from across from pretty far away that i could see the muzzle flashes and then those rounds started hitting the vehicle i was in and my first thought was like 
I got to get back and long snap. Like, don't. <laughs> if you're going to just wing me, you know, if I'm going to get hit just a little huh. graze, I can handle that. But don't. I really want to play football, which is so weird and maybe even a little, like, selfish. But that's just where my of course that's where my head first thought was. It wasn't like, oh, I'm going to die. Or it was just like football. I was like, oh, no. <laughs> I got to get back and long snap. Right. You know? Right. Um, and unfortunately, I did not get hit. We did lose. We lost one of our the Afghan captain that day. Oh. Uh, yeah, he, he was awesome. Too. He was such a great leader. Um, he passed. And, and t- the two first two people that were on the scene trying to treat him were our team sergeant and our medic. Uh, so Scotty and, and Tommy, if they're listening somehow, uh, they knew who they are. Mm-hmm. And that was, uh, you know, just to see that, even though they, they weren't able to ultimately save his life, the fact that they were trying and they were putting themselves in great danger to do that was just like that partnership and I think that's, this is, I'm not trying to plug the show again, no, but go like, for it. No, please. this is why it go makes it, sense man. to, for me to host this show, I think, because those experiences with the American soldiers and the Afghan or Iraqi soldiers and the bonds that we develop, even though we have nothing in common, except yes. for we're fighting a common enemy from a culture and custom and religion, all that stuff, very different, you know? Uh, but we get past it because we have, we, we find all these other things in common. And, and at the end of the day, you know, what we all want, I think as human beings is, we want to feel safe. We want what's best for our family. We want to make a difference. We want to belong. You know, we we want to matter. And and they were the same. It was the same. You know, and and so seeing that and being a part of that is as much as that day was. Um, I mean, we did a lot of really good stuff, and and it was a successful day by and large. But you never want to lose anybody. Of course, you know. Of course. So within days of that happening, you're yeah. you're in Austin, like a week, Texas, week as later, a college I'm kid back. back in the dorms in the dorms (laughs) this was only because my before my senior year uh i came back i didn't have an apartment at the time i had my stuff in storage and in train in that that training camp that was the first year charlie strong was there coach strong wanted all the players regardless during training camp Mm -hmm. we're all staying in the dorms i'd never lived in the dorm before so i was (laughs) was 32 at the time 33 at the time and I was in the dorm (laughs) you're a 33 year old man in a dorm fresh back from a mission in afghanistan Ready to snap for Texas. Ready to snap for Texas. No. What? A, I mean, and and prior to Charlie Strong, it was Mac Brown, right? Yep, Mac Brown. Yep, he's still still a great friend, and uh, he's been so supportive of everything. He really was supportive of the MVP movie and of MVP. Which thank you again for no, I being part of that. You, no problem. <laughs> I, I, I think we should probably not talk about a movie. Make sure that you and I are, are cool with you know with all the strike and all that sort of stuff that's going on it, right now. It was well before the strike. I understood. But yes, I, but I, yes I, you're you're not wrong. I, I just want to you know. Yeah. I've, I've got your back, basically. I know that's what. <laughs> Thank uh, you, Chris. Well, we an, can talk about MVP. Different, and different vets and players. Yes, mer- so Thank about, you for supporting that. Of right course. Right. So about merging vets and players. Before we go here, um, what is the latest on that? You and Stray, and, and obviously Glaze, yeah. Jake Glazer. So what do you got it for me on great. that? It was great. It's been great. We had our first uh, first gala in Dallas, which is our one of our newer chapters and one of our biggest chapters. We got eight mm-hmm. now, and. Uh, you know, Jay went up there and absolutely crushed it. You know, brought the house down to kind of talking about that's what he does. Yeah, that's you know, what he, he does. only knows one speed. Yeah, Jay. Glaze. Yeah, Glaze. Jay. Yeah, no, right. He knows right exactly. Um, no, but it's been great. Yeah, so we've got our most recent chapters in Phoenix, and so that was that was cool during Super Bowl week this last year to be able to do some stuff, and it's been going really well. So we're 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 poised to open some more, and it, you know, it's tough. It's tough times right now, like. Uh, economically you know it's mm-hmm. been hard so that nonprofits take a lot of that hit because these companies that are laying people off uh because they have to or it's just a matter of bottom line things sometimes it's like they can't justify giving to a charity if this is also happening at the time so it's been that's been hard but mvp has been super strong that's awesome yeah. and so folks again it's it's I, I i keep forgetting the the uh it's merging vets and players merging vets and players org. uh vets and players vets and players i knew that okay vets and by and the players. way denver and aj who you had sitting ah. right here one day they they love you man and they say they said hello will you please tell yeah. them i said hi we just they did. can come back they're listening I okay good you. excellent well you know come back those i know they sat in on a on a show uh, a couple years ago so. yeah they can come back anytime. Yep. Uh, so vetsandplayers.org. And these are sort of people who come back who, who come back home or have left the sporting world together. Yeah. Getting together, working out, and having support group uh, conversations together. Exactly. And, and pulling each other through whatever needs to Com- be. Combat vets and, and former pro athletes. and Pretty wild. You know, just, yeah, finding that, that purpose again when they lose a uniform. You know, obviously it's a different uniform, mm-hmm. but different stakes, you know, war and, and, and playing sports, 100% different things. But the locker room camaraderie uh the structure all those things very similar and 
typically that ending at a pretty young age is is very similar as well. Nate, you're the man at Nate Boyer 37 on Instagram and Twitter, right, Chris? On Twitter, Twitter, it's, it's Twitter. Twitter. Very good. We'll make Twitter, sure. Guys. Survive the raft available on the Discovery Channel and Max, nine Eastern and Pacific on Sunday nights, and right here on Roku uh, as well through the Max stream. Great to see you. Anytime, Love you, brother. Right Love back you. at you. Catch the Rich Eisen show every single day on the Roku channel, twelve to three Eastern for free. 